Can you guys hear me? Okay, awesome. Um, so yeah, speaking about how data impacts human emotions, uh, two things I learned today. I don't have the inspiration like our first speaker. I don't have the charm like our previous speaker. <laughs> But yeah, I'm here to talk to you guys about something that I feel is going to impact the way, not just what we're doing or, or how we're living today, but something that really gonna, that's something that's going to drive the future of the way we just operate and the way we just exist. I'm going to talk about the impact of artificial intelligence on the future of talent. I think it's a topic that is very pressing. It's something that uh, is going to impact the way we just get into the job market and perform our tasks. So it's something that is really crucial to the way we start forming our thought processes around this. Artificial intelligence, for those of you who don't know, is one of the drivers of the fourth industrial revolution, which means that it's going to impact every single process, every single um, product, every single function that we know as mankind today. Um, I want to take a walk down memory lane to tell you guys my first interaction with technology, my first interaction with uh, robots and how that sort of shaped uh, me to sort of start loving technology in many ways. How many of you guys watched this cartoon? Awesome. Jetsons. One of my favorite cartoons as a kid. And uh, I really thought that they had some super cool stuff that that really inspired me to love technology. So three things that I really took out from that uh, cartoon show. One is video phones, right? So George Jetson would sort of come and uh, do, these, uh, do these talks or, or he'd like communicate with people through a video phone. I thought that was really cool. They also had a personal assistant called Rosie who would actually do the cleaning and the housework and stuff like that. Another fascinating thing that I thought. And the third thing that he had was a digital watch where he could not just like have like a video conversation with someone on it, uh, but just the fact that you had a digital screen on your wrist was something that was really cool. But things that we thought that would not really exist over a period of time, which is why they're actually showing it in the cartoon, is something that is a part of our everyday lives today. And when I actually saw Jetsons, I think I was probably maybe seven or eight years old. Um, 10, 15 years later, you started seeing these technologies in, every day, in, in our everyday lives and in everyone's hands, right? Uh, everyone has a video phone that can do Skype, FaceTime, uh, pretty much anything. You have robots as assistants and you have digital watches through which you can also not only just check out your, your uh, heartbeat or, or, or have uh, access to, let's say, weather and stuff like that, but you can also make phone conversations, which I think is really cool. But in such a short span, in, uh, span of time, you can see how everyday technology is actually influenced by uh, things like machine learning and artificial intelligence. So looking at stuff like this is where I felt that technology was just our friends and not something out to replace us. However, Hollywood actually showed us that we're always at a war with this new uh, information, with this new piece of technology with robots, right? Terminator showed that to us. The Age of Ultron in Avengers actually showed that to us. So we're also constantly thought that these guys are things that we have to be in a battle with in, a, in an everyday scenario. So taking a vote of people in this room, how many of you guys feel that artificial intelligence is actually good? Very cool. So good to see a lot of like-minded people. And how many of you guys think that artificial intelligence is bad, that technology is going to like just eat all of us up? Okay, so good that we have AI optimists and not AI pessimists. Um, but in many, uh, in many talks that I've actually given on this topic, the crowd is more or less split, right? Some people actually feel that artificial intelligence is out there uh, to sort of get after what we're sort of doing and replace us in many ways. In fact, scientific community and academia at large is also conflicted with this thought where you have like guys like Bill Gates and Zuckerberg on the one hand who feel that AI is super cool and it's going to really transform and change life. And on the other hand, you have guys like Elon Musk who actually feel that uh, artificial intelligence is going to re replace us. Okay, so talk about technology failing when you need it to. Uh, 
Okay. Cool. So Zuckerberg, one of the greatest AI optimists, he feels that if you're against artificial intelligence and if you're against technology, you're actually against the essence of mankind. So you're against uh, smarter, let's say, gadgets. You're against uh, solving viruses like coronavirus through technology. You're against the essence of humanity. And then you have guys like Musk. Um, Okay, I just guess that technology is failing us today. <laughs> okay, and you have guys like Musk who actually think that technology is gonna is really gonna get out of our uh, get us out of our comfort zones and get us out of the jobs that we're doing today. Um, but whenever I sort of look at this debate, right, I'm taken back to the industrial revolution where there were many people who actually thought that these machines are actually going to replace human endeavor and we're going to be useless and redundant. So this is one of the photos that actually was the first organized revolt against industrial revolution. It's very funny because it happened 100 years after industrial revolution actually started, where you had guys in New York actually trying to create an organized labor against, um, against guys from putting machines in factories. I think you're going to have to just like do this for me. Great, but when you take a step back and you look at the impact of industrial revolution, you'll actually see that technology and mechanized ways of production had a positive effect on human life. Um, so you can see that life expectancy was somewhere around 30 years of uh, people living to 30 years around the 1500s, and now that's about like 75 to 80 years. You can see its impact on GDP as well, right? So not only did the productivity of the world sort of increase rapidly when industrial revolution started being adopted, but you also saw that countries like the West that were the proponents of industrial revolution actually grew a lot faster than the rest of the world that were sort of laggards in adopting new technology and new processes. Let me come back to the topic of today, right? Is, is artificial intelligence really out there to replace us? So McKinsey did a study recently on the future of jobs. What that report actually revealed is that less than 5% of, of the jobs um, have tasks that are actually 100% automatable. If you look at the stat, in a way it's good, makes us feel that, that we, we're still gonna be required. However, that same report had another very shocking statistic. What it said is that 60% of the jobs of of today and the future are actually going to have one third of them that is going to be replaced by some form of technology. So essentially our jobs are safe, but the way we're going to perform those jobs is going to be very different. So let's summarize the discussion so far, including the fact that technology failed. Um, AI is not necessarily good or bad. Uh, automation is spreading at a rate that we cannot even imagine. Technology, I believe, will augment human effort. It's going to make a lot of what we do a lot better, a lot more efficient, and we're already seeing great signs of that. And there is still, however, a clear, a clear societal impact of artificial intelligence. Coming to the workforce and, and the way people just invest their time, if you're looking at from when AI is adopted to, not sorry, so when mechanized production is actually adopted to now, what you sort of see is that there is a lesser um, intensity of agriculture and a greater adoption of guys and services. So what that's actually telling you is that automation really displaced labor uh, from mechanized stuff that they would do, but is now making us to actually think about um, how we can actually apply ourselves better. But low-skilled labor is actually going to impact, uh, be impacted first through new technology. If I were to look at a study of the American population, about 50% of them were earlier employed in, ag in agriculture. That statistic is actually down to less than 2% today. Now think about the impact of artificial intelligence into, or, or rather machine replacing human effort in a country like India, right? You're gonna have wide scale 
Um, just because of the fact that the lowest form of labor is going to be replaced by technology, you're going to have a huger gap in, uh, in income. You're going to have more rich, you're going to have more poor, and that gap between them is just going to keep increasing. That is actually going to cause a lot of societal tension. You're going to have a greater socio-economic divide, and that is going to create a lot of people wanting to revolt the guys who actually have a lot of things gifted to them on the plate, right? So that's going to create like a strain on the national, uh, on the on the nation's fabric. Studying a report from Dell, 85% of the jobs of tomorrow don't even exist today, which means that we don't even know what we're going to head out into. But one thing's actually clear, right? So there's not going to be a shortage of jobs, but it's going to be a shortage of skills required to perform those jobs, which actually makes us wonder what are we doing in institutions like this, right? How relevant is what we're studying today when we sort of enter the job market of tomorrow? So I'm a non-technical student in the sense that I never actually studied computer engineering, but I lead a data sciences team because I'm able to, I have a grounding in statistics that sort of enables me to understand how to look at problems differently. But when I was in college and when I was in school, right, things like artificial intelligence and machine learning weren't even heard of. Um, I read another statistics from the World Economic Forum that actually said that 50% of the knowledge that you are taught in a first year uh, engineering degree is actually going to be redundant by the time you're done with that program, which is actually a very startling fact because then you sort of question the relevance of the stuff that you're actually taught in classrooms today. Now, if we are feeling this ourselves, right, think about those who don't even know what artificial in uh, intelligence is, like our drivers, our cooks, uh, our support staff. They don't even know technology the way we do. So if you are going to create products and, and technology that's actually going to replace them, they don't even know what's going to be headed. And now as you go further down the value chain, you're going to find that this is actually going to become a huge problem in a developing country, especially like ours. Having said that, I feel I am an AI optimist. I feel that there's a lot that we can do with technology. Just the fact that uh, translation, solving diseases, things like that are actually being enhanced by technology means that humanity is not actually doomed, not actually headed um, for a doomsday per se. But you're still going to require the human to govern that technology. You're going to require a guy to operate that robot to see that that robot is actually uh, doing the right thing or not. So in many ways, I am an AI optimist. Uh, vibes like this from the government and, and programs that they create, this one is by the Niti Aayog, actually shows that there is thinking in that direction. The lesser fortunate part of society is actually being looked at. So I'm quite positive about the future. However, when it comes to skills that we require, right, I don't think it's the theory of what we study in a classroom that actually holds us in good stead. But I feel that it's skills that will actually keep us in a good place in the workforce. And I don't think there is going to be technology that's actually going to replace that part of it. Um, one is adaptability, that you should be able to thrive in any situation that you're thrown in. And that's a skill that's going to really be tested as we go into the future. The next thing is devising a broader outlook. You've got to be able to step outside a problem and look at it from a holistic point of view. And I think that thought process is just going to be enabling you to sort of come up with solutions that you couldn't have even thought of before. You have to constantly be hungry for knowledge, right? Be it nutrition or acting or theater or whatever it is, there's always something to learn. There's always something new that I didn't know today. Heck, I feel that. I learned so much more just sitting through two talks today, right? So I feel that you have to constantly be wanting to learn and wanting to grasp new knowledge. That is a skill that I feel that you're not going to be replaced by technology with it. And be a team player. You have to know how to work, not just harmonize your efforts with people, but now with robots. You've got to find a way how to make technology actually be working in a direction you want it to, rather than being overwhelmed by it. These are skills that I feel that are really cool. However, when we look at education systems like the world's best in Finland, there are three more skills that they actually talk about. The first one being critical thinking, that you should be able to evaluate problems and come up with solutions um, in, at a very rapid rate. The next is communication. If we're not able to understand each other, if we're not able to understand situations, we'll never be able to solve a problem together. And the last thing is creativity. You've got to constantly be innovative in the solutions you come up with 
and you've constantly got to adapt yourself. I feel that if we possess these skills, there's no replacing us and the world is not doomed after all. Thank you.